In this video, I'm going to show you how to create layered magazine image transfers that can be used as collage fodder. Hello, my name is Katherine Raines. I'm a mixed media collage artist, and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. If you see value in my videos, I would deeply appreciate a thumbs up, and if you would subscribe to my channel. Links for all the supplies to make these papers are down below under Show More. And while you're there, you might also want to check out my free five-day class where I show you how to use all the papers created during Tune and Tuesday to make fabulous collages the very first try. So let's get into creating layered magazine image transfers. What we're doing today is talking about how to do layered magazine image transfers. And I just, I don't know, I think these are really quite stunning. So this is the one I did on a reel and a, a, an Instagram, it's a short as well for YouTube. But I made a lot of other ones that are very different than this. So all of them are layered though. So I put some kind of writing underneath this and then I put some kind of magazine image that just gives us a lot of texture. So for me, this would be a background piece. Um, they work really well with you know magazine images of women. I don't particularly like this one all that much, but it worked well. I'm gonna be showing you four different ways to layer these. It's all the same technique, but it's just like using the same technique in different ways to get what you want. Now, my whole goal here is to get collage fodder. So like this piece right here, I probably, I'm not gonna probably use this entire piece in a collage. However, I probably will use something like that. So I will make that little piece a collage and then I will collage all around it. And for those of you who've been hanging out with me for a while, you know that I make five collage papers, five weeks in a row. And then the sixth week, I will take all of the collage papers I've made and put them into one collage. So the intention is to have enough to choose from from this art demo that I will be able to make a couple collages out of this using this as one of the pieces of the five. So let's start with what materials you need. Now I am making this on pretty heavy paper. This is mixed media paper, you can do it on watercolor paper, stone hinge paper, something is pretty thick. Now you don't have to do that. I mean I've seen people do this just on copy paper, but because I'm actually using this as the substrate for a future collage, so I'm doing the image transfer right here. Um, I want this to be, I want the, the background to be substantive so it can hold other pieces of my collage. You also want magazine images, obviously. Now, what you choose in a magazine image has a lot to do with how well this works. So what I was shooting for is light colored pieces. So if you saw my reel, this has a lot of light, had a lot of light pieces, light images in it. So I wouldn't want an entire image that had all that dark green because the layer underneath it is not gonna show through. So this would be particularly good because it has a lot of white in it. This is very dark, but right here is light. So that would work really well for this technique. Same thing here, that isn't so good, but this would be really cool. So this would be a really nice textured background to a collage. Women's faces are fantastic for this because you know if you're gonna do some kind of layering underneath, all of that print will show right through. So all of the women's images usually work really well. I have another one, I love this one. Um, but this one is not as good. So I just wanna show you what doesn't work as well. So because it's so dark, what I layer this on top of is not gonna show through. Now it would show here and it would show on the woman's face, but there's not enough on this image that would make it really spectacular unless I'm just shooting for these two images as being my layers. You also want a roller. You want some kind of medium. Now I'm using a matte medium. This is Liquitex matte medium. You can use a, a gloss medium. It doesn't need to be matte. And I'm gonna try this rubber cement eraser to get my uh, magazine off of. Usually I use my fingers, but someone suggested on Instagram I try this. Diana, so thank you very much. This is actually a hard brayer, but I think a soft brayer would work too. It doesn't really matter. I'm really just trying to roll the, the glue you know, so I'm, I'm rolling the magazine glue flat. And is there anything else? I do have a catalyst wedge here and I'll show you how I'm using that as well. Oh, I just realized this is important. You want a sponge. 
and I've got a, a sponge with a you know kind of a bristly scrubby thing here that makes it a lot easier to get the, the pulp off. And I think that's it. I prepared little mixed media substrates. I have some six by sixes. And I have actually coated this with gesso on both sides. By the way, that's not necessary. I did it just because I do intend to use this as the actual base of my collage. I'll, you know, I'll be putting an image transfer down on, but I'll make some, I'll put some collage Im images down on this in subsequent weeks, not this week. So I just wanted to protect the paper. So not only do you want magazine pieces, but you also want to find some neutral uh, bases that you can put as the bottom layer here. So I've got one right here. This is actually a letter from my father. So those of you who are looking for unusual or really meaningful collage uh, elements, this is one of my absolute favorite. I've used this letter, I've Xeroxed it and used it many, many times in many different ways in my collages, but I'm gonna use that as the base of my collage. I'm gonna um, do an image transfer on top of it. But other things that work really well are music scores. This is just an old book page. This happens to be a dictionary page, uh, an advertisement from a newspaper. Um, I collect a lot of vintage paper. So this is just a letter from World War II actually. So this makes, in fact, I am using all of these things and what I'm about to show you. So we'll start with this letter. Now I'm going to take you all the way through this particular one, but the rest of them I've actually pre-set up because there's some drying time involved here and I don't want you to wait for glue to dry. So this is a, a piece of Xeroxed paper. So I've actually Xeroxed a letter from my father onto here and I actually lightened it up. So I, I use Photoshop or Canva just to make it a little lighter because I don't want it to be so, I don't want it to be really dark because I don't want it to be the only thing you see when the image transfer comes out on top. I did put a fixative on this, just so you know. So this is the fixative I use, Krylon Workable Fixative, just to make sure that when I put this glue on top of this, it doesn't run because every now and then it will do that. It's kind of a little unpredictable for me. I'm sure I should be able to predict it, but I don't. Like one time it runs, the next time it doesn't. So first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna glue this down. And I probably already put too much glue here. It's a lot. So I'm just gonna spread this out. Now one, one of the nice things about doing this particular technique is I'm not all that concerned about bubbles. You know, little creases in the, the paper, in any of the layers because when you put the image transfer on top of it, it just doesn't matter. Um, you don't see any of the imperfections, you know, in, the, uh, in this not being placed down completely right. Now, so yeah, I can use a catalyst wedge to get this down. I've already not put it down perfectly, which again, doesn't really matter. Um, the other option is just to roll this down. And we'll see how well this did. So if you look at this, actually, Amazingly enough, this is completely flat. Um, that has not been my success. And you'll see, because I'm gonna do I'm gonna do four of these for you, and you'll see that some of these are have more bubbles in them. So I'm trying to see if I've got it completely flat. Okay, that's the first layer. Now I don't need to wait for this to dry. So we're just gonna layer something right on top of this. I'm gonna put glue right here on top of the bottom layer, paint this out. I'm trying to keep as much glue off my newly painted art table as I can. It's almost impossible, but I'm gonna try. So put a nice thick coating of uh, matte medium down here. Now, here's the tricky part. So I got this piece of magazine. Actually, make this bigger, okay. Piece of magazine, and it turns out that both sides of this actually are pretty cool in terms of it would make a nice image transfer. So I've got really light tones here which means this writing is gonna show through really well. It also has some really light tones here as well. A um, little bit darker here, but you know, I was trying to think, which one do I like more? Let's take a vote. <laughs> which one do you like, this one or this one? But to me, this one just has a little more interest to it. Now, so here's the thing. This is bigger than my little substrate here. So I need to decide how I'm gonna put this down. So, and I may not use the, women's Im the woman's image at all. You know, when I do my collage, I may actually just use what's right here because I think that's really interesting. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna flip. I probably just like talked more than I should. Let me put the little glue down. I gotta make sure this is wet enough so that this magazine transfer, the magazine itself 
will adhere to it and it already was drying up. And look at that. I don't know if you can see this, but there's already some wrinkles in here. So they did show up after all. And don't worry about it. Um, when I'm doing most of my collages, I, I do want to get most of the wrinkles out, but in this one, I don't. Okay, so I'm going to put this face down. This is the image I want. I don't really want this uh, darker image here. So I'm going to position this, kind of eyeball it. Put it like right there. And this is when the roller comes in handy because I'm not going to put any matte medium on top of here. I am going to... I'm just going to allow the glue to attach itself to the bottom of this image tray, of this magazine piece. Now, if I pull this up, you're going to see, do you see the bubbles? There's some bubbles here. Now, I'm going to try to press some of them out, um, but I'm still going to have them. Uh, magazines are the hardest things to my, in my book to get bubbles out. Luckily, this particular technique, it doesn't matter all that much. But wherever I have a bubble, I don't have a magazine. The actual ink to the magazine is not um, against the substrate, so I can't pull it off. Now, I do want this to dry, but luckily I've got three more to show you. So I'm going to let this sit off to the side, and I'm going to show you three more, and then we'll come back to that one. So before I came on camera, I actually did a couple of these. I actually adhered a few, so I didn't have to do it. I could kind of shorten the drying time here. So let me make, I got, I got some sun coming in here. I wish I'd turn my blinds down. Anyways, so I've already attached another letter. This is actually from my mother. I use a lot of letters from people um, to this substrate. Now, another way of doing this is to color this. Now, I like using a certain color palette. I use Salo Blue, um, Hansi Yellow Light, and Quin Magenta. And I've already mixed up a little bit of paint here. And so what I'm gonna do is just, just lightly shade this. And this is, let's see if I still got some paint left over. I did this earlier. So this is right here. This is a uh, little phthalo blue, Hansa yellow light and a little bit of white. So I am gonna just, and I've added some water to it. If we took, if took collage kickstart with me, you know I love adding water. And really all I'm trying to do here is just color this base so that I've got a little bit of, you know, it's not just pure white when the image transfer goes on top of it. And that's it. So I could make it much darker, but I want that writing to show through. Now, in preparation for today, I've actually already done this. So imagine that this board right here, I already did, I already did the same thing. So underneath here, I have actually got a piece of this writing and I've already colorized it and drew and dried it. And then I put my piece of magazine on top of it. So this is the back side of the magazine. Now, this is the actual image that is upside down right here. So I just took a picture of it so you'd see what's a, what is going to come, come up when I start doing the rubbing um, of this. So this one was actually placed face down. This is just a copy. So, by the way, I have never done this particular thing before. This is, you're actually seeing some experiments <laughs> live in action right here. So I've got my sponge, this is how I'm gonna start. This is all dry now. And the way I start is I just start rubbing with a sponge. And you can already see the pulp comes up really quickly. And as soon as I get enough, and you, are, you can see the blue coming through, which is really nice. Make so sure I've got enough water on here. So as soon as I get enough of the water and the pulp starting to come up, start rubbing it off. Um, someone had suggested, you know, using this rubber cement uh, eraser for it, which I think is a great idea too. It's just that when you, this actually comes off really easily, um, particularly if you don't put paint on the top layer. So uh, I'm not, let me re re rephrase that. If you don't put the matte medium on the back of the uh, magazine, you're only working through the top of this magazine piece. So it actually comes off really, really easy. 
and you're already seeing the face come through. And I'm really liking this a thousand times more than I thought I was gonna. It's kind of risky because I came up with this idea and I said, okay, I wanna do this. Actually, I'm just gonna add a little spray water on it. Um, but I hadn't actually tried it out. But I am already in love with the face that's coming through. And because this particular blue is in my color palette, I really, I love color, you know, keeping to a limited color palette. And I do that through almost, well, through all of my workshops. Um, Collage Kickstart is based on that. Collage Joy, which is coming up in January. Um, I have you actually create your own color palette and stick with it. Now, one of the things I think is very cool about this method is that you don't necessarily have to take off all the paper. I kind of like, kind of like some of this paper hanging out, like on the side. Like right there, I think is an interesting piece, although it doesn't show the woman's face. But right there, I think that's pretty gorgeous. And it has that beautiful blue underneath. Now, if I kept rubbing, I'm probably gonna get too much of that, some of the image of that magazine is gonna come off. But you see enough of the face that it actually works really well. So let me get rid of this pulp. So this is another one I already pre-prepared. So this is a, a, a board. I've already put some kind of, what should I put on here? Oh, I actually Xeroxed it. So I actually, um, my base layer is this uh, music. And this is what I put upside down. So this is the, the, this what you're seeing right here is on the back of this. So <clears throat> the reason I did this one, by the way, is to show you that you can also use this as just a background. Yeah. And so I could actually collage this as a piece of a background. So um, let's see what's gonna happen here. Again, this one's another one I actually have not actually done. I've done something like it, but I thought this would be a super cool background for a collage. Let's see if this is gonna work. By the way, some of them don't work. So there's a part of this that is too much is coming up right there which tells me I've got to be really gentle. That's the other thing, you know, it depends on what kind of magazines you use. I try to use pretty high end magazines that are, see it's too much coming up, this may or may not work here. Which tells me don't use the sponge. I gotta be a little more gentle. Let's see if I can get this to, I want those trees to show through. The blue's coming up. But I try to use heavy duty magazines. So I'm using Vogue, um, what else would I like to use? A Veranda Magazine, House Beautiful, you know, things that have a pretty thick paper, it just works better because magazine papers actually, for the most part, have two pieces of paper stuck together. And so what we're basically doing here is rolling up the back side or the pole from one side. So this one isn't working as well. It all depends on what magazine I used. Although the blue around the border, so we're catching the blue around this border. I think I need a little more water. But you know, you really can't tell what the end result is gonna be until you get a good part of the pulp off. Like I still got part of the, the back here. Yeah, I just took too much off. So there's a lot of variate or a lot of variables on whether this is going to work or not. It's it, the kind of magazine I'm using, how much glue I put down on either one of these layers. So I don't think I have much here. Now I've got this right here, by the way. I think that alone, um, look that sun is bugging me right there. So that's potential um, because I hadn't intended to use this entire piece anyways. So I think I'm I think the rest of this is pretty much a bust. So we're gonna, we're gonna put this one aside. But it's not really a bust, because I like that right there. So this next one is, this is a piece of dictionary paper. So that's the base layer. And what I wanted to experiment with is what would it be like to add this type on top of it? So basically it's type on top of type. So this would be a definite background piece for collage fodder. 
So it, it just gives some interesting texture. You know, I don't just have this showing, I've got two different kinds of type. I've never done this before. So let's see what this, how this goes. Now I've already attached this. So what you see, and there's a little bit coming up right there. Let's roll this a little bit. So the bottom layer, I've already glued down and, and glued it, I mean, and, and dried it. So that's there. And this has already been glued on top. It's like that. So let's start. Actually, I'm going to start with, let me see how this rubber cement thing works. But I'm going to start by gently gluing, by gently rubbing. See so if I can just get the top layer of pulp off. And you're, you're already seeing the type come through. And again, I think the reason the other one didn't work, I think the paper itself, it was an advertisement. Not that all, most of them are advertisements, but the paper was very thin. So the thicker the paper you use as the top layer, the better success I have. Let me see if it, how this rubber cement thing works. Yeah, it actually works really good. Diana, thank you for suggesting this. So, by the way, but it, again, it doesn't hurt my fingertips. Other kinds of image transfers, if you've done them, it really like wears your fingertips. So, you know, after a while, you don't want to do it. But this is actually coming off quite easy. But just because I like rolling it off, because it is easy, add a little more water. I really like that type coming through. And again, this would be a really cool base layer to a collage. And I can guarantee it's going to be. Well, I can't ever guarantee anything, but I think it's probably going to be in the next collage series I make when I have five papers made. So this is the one, this is the first of five. Let's see if we get a little more, add a little more. I find it easier to get that base layer off with a little bit of sponge first. And then I can roll it with my fingers really easy. I think that is super cool. And again, I could leave some of this, you know, the back here, because I think it's kind of interesting to have um, some of this, you know, the back side of that magazine to remain. Wow, I just love that. I also love that the the words are upside down because I don't want the words and the letters to be distracting to my collage unless they mean something. You know, if I actually found a word I really liked, the only problem is when you're doing this process, you're, if you put something upside down, it's going to come in reverse. The base layer, however, the letters are correct because I'm using the, the actual, I'm using this in its right orientation. I'm not putting it upside down. So this is something I want to repeat. I really like that. Get that blue off of there. Because that's the back side of the magazine. Anyways, I like that. What do you think? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip the extra part off here. Okay. Here's one. So let's see what's gonna happen underneath. Wet it down a little bit. And this magazine is coming right up, so hopefully it'll work. You're seeing the, the that other girl, same girl actually, but she's coming right through. But it's so easy to roll up what you don't want. So that white right there, it's because I'm rolling too hard. So as soon as I see that, I just just roll a tiny bit gentler. Because I'm okay with some things coming up. For instance, on this one, you know, I had some things coming up. And that is perfectly okay in my book because it just makes it more interesting. But I don't want critical things to come up, like the whole image. But this is kind of interesting. Actually, it's kind of interesting to where, where the stuff has come up. What do you think? I wouldn't probably use that full woman. I'd probably cut her off, like right there, or the other side, right there. Or I wouldn't use it at all. 
I would actually use that because I really love that writing um, as a potential background piece. Okay, I think that's all four of them. So we did four. I'll be back next Tuesday with another paper. Bless you all and bye-bye.